Was it me that got my mother's ticket? Not at all. At the airport, I attempted to check in, but my ticket had not been delivered. This time, my daughter-in-law had made the arrangements. Her remark shocked me when my son asked her. I couldn't be happier to be leaving for the airport as my only son was getting married in Hawaii. However, I did not anticipate this level of care. My daughter-in-law has been distant from me ever since my son brought her home. This was too much, even though I tried not to let it affect me. I assumed she wouldn't want me there because she didn't like me. She spoke with such ease, as though it were nothing. I don't get what you're trying to say. She's coming. Of course she is. She's my mother, E said in a harsh tone. Please don't yell. I'm exhausted from traveling, my daughter-in-law, who had arrived earlier, said without emotion. When I could no longer stand it, I begged my son to hand me the phone. Hello, how are you? Oh, Sophia, did you truly intend to attend our wedding as I indicated earlier? You really are such a careless leech. Your lack of shame is funny. Jasmine was probably grinning at me from the other end of the telephone. Would you mind swimming over if you would want to attend? You won't have a hotel room, by the way, so you'll probably have to sleep outside. She wasn't the girl I would allow my son to date, let alone marry. I was the only one not invited to the wedding, even with all of the family and relatives there. I had taken this to the limit even for myself. Jasmine doesn't seem to know where she belongs. I understand. It appears that Jasmine has to learn some hard lessons about the harsh truths of life. My name is Sophia Wilson. I'm a housewife of 55 years old. I enjoy doing crafts and gardening since I'm good with my hands. I'm skilled at knitting and needlework at home, and occasionally I even conduct little lessons when someone asks me to. My family loves my cream puffs and chiffon cakes, which I recently started baking. I've led a simple life and have found happiness in my own ways, yet I was once a very successful professional. I was fortunate enough to get employed by a major construction business following my graduation from a nearby university. I gained a solid reputation for my thorough work and efficiency in HR, and after two years, I was promoted to executive secretary. Three years my senior, my husband Peter, was employed by the same business in the design division back then. Because I was responsible for relaying information from the executives, Peter and I had a lot of interactions, and I grew to like Peter's hard work and lofty goals. After we were sitting next to one other on a bus during a business trip, Peter seemed to feel the same way about me, and our friendship grew rapidly. Peter declared me to be beyond his league. Many men did send me invites to dinner, but I wasn't really interested in any of them. Since Peter was well-liked by the female staff members, I assumed he already had a girlfriend. So I understood that I didn't have any chance with him until one day I actually decided to talk to him. No, not at all, he asked. If it's okay with you, would you like to hang out sometime? And extended an invitation. We grew closer as we conversed and realized that we both liked action movies and hiking. I was considering proposing this location for our upcoming vacation, but Peter generally chose where we would go and I would take care of the planning and research, regardless of how difficult the trek could be. I was constantly in awe of the amazing vistas at the summit. Along with our many mountain walks around the nation, our relationship developed amicably and ultimately led to marriage. I had to decide between concentrating on our house and keeping up my passion for my work when we were married. But after talking to Peter about it, I decided to commit myself to our family. Jasper, our son, was born a year after we were married. I did the housework and took care of the kids well, and I also gave Peter job advice. Peter frequently mentioned how our talks encouraged his inventiveness at work, so I was happy to be able to help him in this manner. People around us complimented me on being a kind wife, and Peter's work took off. Peter always made time for the family despite his hectic schedule. He played with Jasper frequently and took us on outings. Jasper looked up to Peter as a child, wanting to emulate his industrious and family-focused father. 
Eventually, he enrolled in a prominent institution and started working for his father's firm. Jasper is 30 years old and in a stage of life when he is considering getting married. He's amiable but reticent among women, and I don't think I've ever heard him discuss casual relationships. As a parent, I became concerned when I found out that Jasper had developed feelings for the daughter of one of my husband's buddies, and they started dating. She is employed at one of our clients' offices. Like his father, Jasper is serious and believes in dating with the goal of marriage, even if they haven't been dating for very long. As his parents, I was relieved that Jasper had met someone wonderful, even if I was astonished to hear this. Jasper was planning to introduce her to us when they made the decision to tie the knot. She is reportedly the daughter of a corporate president and works in accounting thanks to her parents' connections. I was curious about her age, behavior, appearance, and way of meeting him. I suppressed my curiosity and looked forward to the day we would finally meet. It was the previous evening that I had been cooking. I even watered the flowers at the doorway and cleaned the living room drapes. I couldn't help but wonder about Jasper's prospective wife's character. My spouse smiled comfortingly at me, seeing that I had been fidgeting all morning. Although I'm also meeting her for the first time, I've worked with her father before. I was requested to look after his daughter. He acknowledged that she can be a bit of a prick, but given how quiet Jasper is, perhaps a lively companion would be ideal. He said lovingly, holding my hand to calm me down. We spoke about several situations and I said, Yes, it would be wonderful if she could take the lead and bring out the best in Jasper. The doorbell rang abruptly. Hello, my name is Jasmine Daniel, Jasmine said with a smile. She had long brown hair that was nicely combed and tinted and a trendy appearance thanks to her chic makeup. Jasper held her baggage while she wore a somewhat short dress and carried an ostentatious-looking fancy purse. Greetings, lovely young woman. You must have traveled a great distance. My spouse and I were ecstatic to meet her, so we said, Come in and make yourself comfortable. Jasper thanked us and came inside, feeling a little sheepish. Thanks for the warm welcome, Mom, Dad, Jasper remarked. First, my spouse and Jasper moved the bags into the living room. I went up to talk to Jasmine as she was removing her shoes at the door. Jasmine, Jasmine said, you're too clingy, aren't you? In a low voice that surprised me. You're a stay-at-home mother, right, Sophia? A sluggish jerk who is stealing from the house. Because my shoes are pricey, please assemble them correctly. She continued sloppily taking off her shoes before brashly interrupting me. Ugh, so annoying, she said. I was taken back by such an attitude. I've never let Jasper talk to his parents in such a way, so when I heard her saying such hurtful words, it shocked me. Jasmine's rude remarks annoyed me, yet she was all smiles and good looks with Peter and Jasper. I made the first move and fell in love at first sight when Jasper initially came to our firm for employment. She confidently added, His looks are exactly my type, and he's so kind. Truly the best husband. Jasper, meantime, scratched his head timidly. Jasmine had been the one who had pursued the connection with such vigor. I chose to ignore Jasmine's previous attitude, even though I didn't like it, because Jasper seemed to genuinely care about her. Maybe she was simply anxious. In addition, my spouse appeared really content, stating, He's a little erratic, but please look after him, before overindulging in alcohol and talking nonstop. Dad, please stop treating me like a child forever, Jasper pleaded, his cheeks reddening from drinking. Oh, sorry, sorry. My happily surprised hubby chuckled. The meeting went on well and Jasper and Peter were happy. Peter then excitedly presented Jasmine with a plate of macarons for dessert. Whoa, they are very tasty. Where did you purchase them? As Jasmine took a mouthful, her eyes widened in amazement and she questioned. Jasper excitedly replied, My mom made them, while savoring his favorite macarons. 
Oh, really? Jasmine's voice abruptly became cold. It's only natural you can make something like this since you have plenty of free time, she said with no more curiosity. Incidentally, I had some really delicious pastries at the Beverly Hills Hotel recently. Jasper, I'd like to accompany you there. She was starting to get on my nerves. Is this a way you talk to your future mother-in-law? But I avoided saying anything so any argument won't erupt during the night and ruin the mood. Jasper hurriedly said, Okay, okay, let's go together. In an attempt to appease the demanding female. But I was unable to get rid of my mounting discomfort. Then Jasmine made a daring request. Please make meat dishes going forward, because I prefer meat to fish. She didn't even bother to say, thank you, or clean the dishes. Does she believe that I am only a servant? I wondered if I could get along with her because of her arrogant attitude and great pride toward me as a stay-at-home mother. Will this be a female I can get along with? Suddenly, I felt like my head was heavy. What about her appeals to Jasper so much that he wants to marry her? Surely, she must possess some positive qualities. I had a persistent sense of anxiety after they went. In an attempt to ease my agony, I shook my head. I chose to believe Jasper's decision, even if I had misgivings about Jasmine's attitude and my uncertainties about the marriage. Jasper kept having Jasmine over for dinner. Fish once more? I'm over it. Would you perhaps lighten the seasoning a little? Even though Jasmine had insisted on having meat earlier, she did not hesitate to voice her dissatisfaction with the meal. She never intended to lend a hand. She just ate. She once said, Sophia, you know how to sew, right? This patchwork is so awful that I detest it. Could you please fix these pants? Additionally, do my friend's clothes. She blatantly shoved her assignments upon me. I made the suggestion, Jasmine, how about we cook together next time? Since I wanted to get along with her. She gave me a dismissive, quick response. Avoid making light of anything. Why must I prepare food? As haughty as ever, she shot out. I'll tell my dad if you're trying to boss me around. But Jasper started to pick up on her habits. He tried to reprimand Jasmine, saying, Jasmine, you shouldn't talk to mom like that. What? Here, I am the one being abused. You always seem to side with your mom, Jasper. It's terrible, she shot back, turning her face red. There's no way I'm living with you, even if we get married, she firmly said in front of Peter another day. I'm not good with elderly folks. Take care of yourselves. She even treated my spouse rudely. We're not going to live together, but you don't have to be so aloof, I gently corrected her. We're still family whether we're married or not. Jasmine abruptly interrupted me, saying, Don't rely on us. We're still strangers. Jasper attempted to negotiate, but she was continuously coming up with an excuse, and in the end, she threatened to notify her father if things didn't work out. I warned Jasper not to become too engaged, since it would just make things more complicated. I was concerned that things would be more difficult for Jasper if Jasmine and I couldn't get along. Jasmine's haughty demeanor tired me, but I put up with it. The day for the meeting of the families eventually arrived, and the wedding preparations proceeded in spite of everything. Please be nice to our naive daughter, smiled a hearty, very tanned father of Jasmine, maybe from golfing. Please don't be too hard on her, she's sensitive, Jasmine's mother said despite her advanced age, with a kind, innocent voice. As soon as Jasmine's father started talking about business instead of the wedding, Jasmine and her mother emphasized that because the bride should be the center of attention, all wedding planning should be handled by her side. I concurred, believing that she should be the main focus of the wedding. Jasmine was enthusiastic about having the wedding in Hawaii having imagined a beautiful chapel overlooking the ocean under a bright blue sky. We invited only close family on our ten-day travel itinerary. Jasper frequently worked late, so Jasmine made most of the arrangements. It's a once-in-a-lifetime event, so it's okay to spend some money, right? She stated, 
choosing items considerably in excess of what was affordable. Jasmine chose a posh hotel, a couture wedding gown, and even a limo. That was characteristic of her. She was very excited to make all of the visitor reservations, including hotel and travel. I was ecstatic that Jasper was getting married in Hawaii since I like that state. When I told my friends about the news, they immediately congratulated me with great excitement. I even began to consider the trinkets I should pack for my trip. The day of departure, we headed to the airport, where everyone was excitedly awaiting the arrival of Jasper, who had arrived early. I appreciate everyone being here. As he began distributing the tickets Jasmine had given him, he added, Let's go on a nice trip together. When it was my time, I was shocked to see that the envelope with my name was empty and that my ticket had vanished. It seemed unbelievable to me. As soon as he saw I was upset, Jasper comforted me, saying, I'll ask Jasmine. It must be a mistake. Jasmine had already phoned her parents ahead of time, so he called her right away. Well, duh, there's no error, Jasmine remarked nonchalantly. I didn't get her a ticket because I thought she wouldn't come because she hates me. Why are you saying this? Of course I want my mother to be there. Jasper's tone became tight. Jasmine said with a careless, Don't raise your voice. I'm tired from jet lag. When I could stand it no longer, I begged Jasper to give me the phone. Hello, it's me. What are you doing, Jasmine? Well, Sophia, as I mentioned before, were you really going to be at our wedding? Jasmine shot back, her tone rife with contempt. It's hilarious how shameless you are, just like a lazy bum. She was grinning at me from the other end of the telephone. Why don't you swim across if you wish to come? You'll have to sleep outside because there isn't a hotel room for you, she chuckled. Being the lone relative not invited to the wedding, while all the others were, was embarrassing and degrading. It was inexplicably painful, and I didn't understand why I had to put up with this. My body trembled with hatred as anger shot through me, ultimately pushing me to break. I couldn't stand Jasmine's actions any longer, but I still wanted to support Jasper in getting married. I told Jasper that I had made the choice not to go to the Hawaiian wedding. Jasper said, Mom, if you're not going, then neither am I, wearing a distressed look. I can't marry you if you can't treat my mother with respect, he forcefully stated when he phoned Jasmine again. Jasmine was enraged. What connection does this have to Sophia? Why are you postponing the wedding till now? I am going to feel embarrassed since I informed all of my pals about it. She let out a frantic cry, but Jasper hung up. I had no sympathy for Jasmine. Even though I knew that she had been terrible to me from the start, things continued to become worse till now. Jasper appeared completely defeated, and my normally composed spouse, who had been silently watching the proceedings, was now enraged at Jasmine's intimidation. He promised to talk to Jasmine's father once more. Jasmine gave me a call one week later. All of this is your responsibility. I'm done, she cried out her voice brimming with complaints. I'm going to charge you for the cancellation fees and damages, you old hag. She let out a scream and hung up quickly. Her ill-mannered demeanor remained unaltered. After another week went by, Jasmine called me again. She started apologizing as soon as I replied, saying, Sophia, I was wrong. I sincerely apologize. Her voice sounded thin, hardly audible. I see. I'm happy you recognized your error. I answered coolly. From your point of view, a carefree freeloader like me must be frustrating, yes? No, no way, you're amazing, Jasmine answered, her once brash demeanor now gone. I grinned, knowing that at last she realized where she stood. That way, my life would be tranquil again and I wouldn't have to cope with that pampered woman. But why had Jasmine's attitude suddenly changed? In actuality, my husband serves as the company's president, and 90% of Jasmine's father's business's income comes from my husband's enterprise. Though they are my husband's company subcontractors, they are technically clients. Strong links with my husband's firm were something Jasmine's father intended to keep. 
but Jasmine had damaged everything. My husband became enraged and demanded an instant apology from Jasmine's father after telling him about her treatment of me. You naive. How did you proceed? Say sorry to Sophia, he said. Jasmine called, nearly crying, as she realized how serious the issue was. At that point, my spouse made the decision to break up business relations with Jasmine's father's company. Without our business, his already faltering company declared bankruptcy. Jasmine had always hated me because, in contrast to her own difficult past, I seemed to lead a pleasant, stable existence. Jasmine's father had a notorious reputation for womanizing and frequently luring in female co-workers and customers. Jasmine's mother was once his mistress, but once she became pregnant, she had to raise Jasmine by herself. She was careless with money, worked as a hostess to make ends meet, and disregarded housework. She was deprived of affection, showed little interest in her children, and envied the lawful wife. She became the second wife when the first one died, but she never made an effort to change her circumstances. Instead, she would just keep wasting money and moaning about her lot in life. I was the complete opposite of Jasmine's mother, loved by my husband and having a steady life, which is why Jasmine loathed me. Life isn't always great, despite how it seems at times. I had to give up a career I liked in order to support my spouse. Therefore, I had to overcome my own obstacles. In addition to cooking every day to keep my family healthy, I also made sure that Jasper's friends and my husband's family were getting along. We've managed to create the life we have today because I approached each day with thankfulness and made a concerted effort to find solutions as they emerged. I hope I can prove to Jasmine that achieving happiness is not simple. After that, Jasmine's father disowned her and said, I don't need a useless daughter. She's dragging me down. He blamed Jasmine for everything that went wrong. In actuality, Jasmine's father and she both struggled with credibility in both their personal and professional lives. Jasmine was the second wife's kid, hence her father never showed her any love. Jasmine's mother showed no affection for her either. She rejected her daughter and stated, Jasmine, you need to handle your own problems, with no intention of supporting her. Her parents were the worst, both of them. Jasmine was forced to live simply as a temporary worker after losing her parental assistance. She handled a steady stream of client complaints from her allotted unit at the customer service center. Customer's displeasure seems to be exacerbated by the awful performance of the prior operator. Jasmine's supervisor often reprimanded her for being impolite and lacking customer empathy. How many times must I remind you to be considerate and consider the viewpoint of the customer? Her supervisor chastised her, saying, At this pace, it'll be hard to renew your contract next time. Hopefully, she will be forced to modify her ways by this hard reality. Jasper, meantime, has made the decision to put his job first and take a vacation from dating. Given that he still has a lot to learn, he stated, I need to improve my judgment of people first. He's working hard every day under my husband's guidance getting ready to take over as the company's president in the future. Opening a cafe is my new endeavor, and Jasper and my husband are both quite supportive of it. Jasmine's criticism of me, calling me a carefree freeloader, inspired me to begin a project I'd always wanted to pursue. I utilized the money I saved up before getting married as my first investment. After receiving great feedback on my chiffon cakes and hand-embroidered coasters with my designs, a magazine has expressed interest in featuring my cafe. I recruited a young, attractive lady to help me run the cafe since I was unable to do it alone. There seems to be a good rapport between her and Jasper, who she periodically runs into. This fresh beginning of mine is going great.